Okay, so for our project, uh, John and I made an LED spectrometer. Now, here's our overall schematic, and uh, the just, gist uh, of this is that we used LED reverse current to produce a voltage which we could read into the Arduino. Essentially, the way that LED reverse current works is that just as LEDs emit specific wavelengths of light, they only absorb a small band of uh, wavelengths, and in absorbing them, they produce a small voltage. <laughs> and we use that small voltage um, and we put it into an op amp to amplify it and then read it into the Arduino. So this is our general circuit. We have four other LEDs, however, this is just um, just a schematic for one of them. So there's this is basically a an amplifying circuit, and the specifics of this are that we added a 0.1 microfarad uh, capacitor to reduce to reduce noise from the uh, from the LED. And the other thing that we added was a reverse Zener diode to protect the, the Arduino from more than 5 volt uh, voltages from the op amp. And then there's, there's the LED. The first one we did was red. So now, this is the actual circuit that we, that we produced. And in reality, these, these slides make it seem idealized. However, in reality, things were not quite as, as neat, mainly due to the fact that all the LEDs that we have over here were not the same. They were from different makers, and they produced different outputs, and so that produced a slew of issues. Those issues were mainly that the, the gain from the LEDs was different, or the, the voltages produced by them were different, and so we had to... Uh, put different gains on each of the op amps to get similar readings. The next issue was that not all the LEDs were the same height, and so we had uh, issues with the shadows from them, and so we wouldn't be able to take a full day's worth because we'd end up with shadows. The next issue was lensing effects from the LEDs, and in order to uh, get rid of this issue, we ground down the tops of the LEDs. So now that we have data coming through our circuit, we need to calibrate it. So we decided to calibrate it off of the sun, since we were having problems calibrating it off of light sources in the lab. So here's the black body from the Planck equation, the ideal black body of the sun. It's about uh, 5780 kelvins. Then these different spectrum lines in it represent our LEDs. We've got an IR LED here, then our red, then our yellow, then our green, then our blue LED. <laughs> So the idea is that when we shine our spectrometer directly at the sun, we should be able to match this, these values um, on our output. So that's what we did. We wrote some code, and the code takes a 20 nanometer swath for each value, takes the integral of that to find out how much that LED should be getting roughly, and divides it over by, or divides it by the entire spectrum, and then relativizes it off of the infrared. That's why infrared is returning a one there. So the sun black body should be giving us about twice as much blue as infrared. We'll use those coefficients later in our Arduino code to, to scale the data. And so here we're testing it out. Here's the ideal black body curve of an incandescent bulb known to be 2950 Kelvin. It's mostly an infrared light and then a steadily decreasing amount of the visible lights as they go lower in wavelength. And here's what our spectrometer measured. A lot of infrared light and decreasing amounts of the visible lights. Now, note that the blue is much lower than it should have been. It should have been up over here, but it's down here. This was a problem we were having a lot of times with. Um, the blue LED is just so much less efficient since it's a different technology that we were having problems reading blue at all in the lab. And it's just of a much lower sensitivity than the rest. All right, so here we're measuring some other light sources. Here's a 5300 Kelvin compact fluorescent bulb that's supposed to be calibrated for daylight 
colors, and it's doing a decent job. Our spectrometer is showing that it has mostly visible light with fairly low infrared light relative to incandescent lights. And then here's the light spectrum for a red light where we just shined a red flashlight on our spectrometer. And as you can see, it's just one spike at red, which is pretty reassuring since it was pure red light and it's almost pure red response. So that was, that was good to see. Okay, this is our Arduino code that we use to collect data. So essentially there's uh, three main parts to this. There's, there's some values here, which we called yellow zero, et cetera, which we used to uh, remove values that we were receiving when the LEDs were in complete darkness. And so obviously that's an issue and would skew our data if we're reading values when they don't have any light, them, light on them. And so the next part involves these calibration numbers here, which, uh, in combination with the values we were receiving from the the newly zeroed values from the Arduino, we added in the Mathematica calibration numbers. And so that's that's where these originate from. The next part here is simply reading the information to the SD card. Now this is um, what we use to make the spectrum graphs that we saw previously and that we'll see in the future. In the, in, the, in the next part of the presentation. Uh, and essentially, the main part of this is that because we don't know the exact flux over any LED, we need to make the data uh, relative. So we made all the intensities uh, relative intensities. So uh, for our data collection, we decided to go to the beach and, uh, and measure the sun during sunset. And we decided to do this because we figured there would be a fairly significant change in the, in the spectrum that we received as the sun passed through more molecules in the atmosphere. Um, the other reason we decided to go to the beach is because we'd have a clear view of the horizon. However, there, there are some clouds here. But overall, clear view of the horizon without any issues from shadows. Now, this is a fairly raw representation of our data. It's simply the relative intensity versus time. And uh, here the magenta color is infrared, red is red, yellow is yellow, etc. Um, and so we, we did see a significant change here. As you can tell, uh, the infrared rises towards, the, uh, towards sunset and green uh, de decreases. Those are the two most significant pieces of data that we got. So that was pretty rough data and it doesn't really match what you would see if you're actually on the beach. So we wanted to maybe create an animation instead that would show how the spectrum was changing in time. So here it is. It's a time lapse of the sun setting between about six o'clock and eight o'clock when the sun set. And what we're hoping to see is that there would be a shift towards more red and infrared light and less green and blue light as the effective color temperature of the sun decreases. And we did see that. It's a little hard to see on the time lapse just because the time scale is so long. But here's some plots of the specific. specific. Yeah, at the beginning, we can see you have a fair amount of blue and green light and fairly low red and, or infrared light and red and yellow in their middle. And then towards the sunset, and very little blue light and very little green light and much, much more infrared light. So that was about what we expected to see. So in closing, some possible additions we thought of. It would be great if we could unify our LEDs instead of having two or three different types of LEDs with different gains and different responses and different angles. It would be great if we had all of the same type of LED. It would, would make it much easier to calibrate and get better data. Uh, we had a lot of problems with the blue LED. And we were thinking that instead of using transistor, or instead of using op amps, we should, could use MOSFET transistors, and maybe get lower, or get data off the blue in lower levels of light. And it'd be great to weatherproof this so we could get longer data collection without having to worry about the rain and the beach. We were pretty swaddled up in plastic to avoid weather in, weather issues. And it would be nice if we could fit curves over the data to match the black body spectrum. We also tried to get data in my yard over a long period of time, but unfortunately the batteries died in the middle of the night, so we never were able to read anything there. 
And so that's it. That's the end of our project.